So in this video, I want to show you how to do your very first assignment because we're going to use an auto grader. So you're cruising along, you're in the class outline, and you go into the Hello World assignment. And this basically is an assignment that's going to run externally. And so I built this server that has all these auto graders on it. So they're going to pop up in a new window. And here you are. So this is the auto grader. It's kind of like the Python uh, playground, except now you have an assignment, right? So, so it's... It says, this is your job to do this. This is what the desired output is supposed to look like. And this is the output of your program. Okay. And so you hit check code and it then submits the code that you've edited here to Python and then it runs it and then you get some output. But in this case, I got a syntax error. Again, I put this in on purpose. Uh, PRNQ is not defined on line two. Oh, I made a mistake. Let's go fix this mistake. Let's go fix this mistake. That needs to be a print, right? Check code. Let's, let's, um, so let's change it. So I'm going to check code. So this is syntactically correct, but it doesn't solve the, so it's like, oh, wait a second. You got, you didn't, this is what you're supposed to say. This is what it was not supposed to say. There's a mismatch here. So you didn't get a grade. And then finally, if you do your editing and you check your code and it works, then it says grade updated on the server. So this is actually sending the grade back to edX automatically, even though this is running on, on my server. And so you get, so that you, you can get errors here, you can get errors there. Now, um, you can always reset your code to what I gave you as the starting code. The code that I always give you is like a subset or it has a mistake in it that you're supposed to fix. And the longer we go, the less and less sample code I give you. Um, and so, so that resetting the code uh, now, the key thing to this, the way this thing works is if you get the grade completed and then you make a mistake, the grade doesn't go down. It keeps the high grade, but since this is pass-fail, once you pass it, it, it's not like, I mean, if you touch it later, it's not going to take your grade back down. So it's not the last grade, it's the highest grade. Now, like in the Python uh, Playground, the teaching assistants have a button that you're not going to see, the View Grades button, that they can look you up, and if you're having trouble... You just can say, hey, here's here's me. You get a hold of the teaching assistant, and you tell them to go look you up, and they again then can see exactly what you've got typed here, right? So it's not like you have to send them something that shows them. They can come in right in here and then collaborate with you and figure that out. Um, uh, if you're a teacher, you can see some analytics, which is like a little graph of who's using it at what time of day, et cetera, et cetera, which is kind of cool. So um, that's how this works. Um, more advanced assignments actually don't just, they do something beyond just comparing these two outputs. So that's too simple, right? So in a, a later assignment, you might actually have to like add two numbers together and the answer might be 42 or multiply two numbers together and the answer might be 42. So you might say, oh, I'm really smart. The answer is supposed to be 42. And so I'm just gonna, but I'm supposed to add multiply six times seven to get 42. But I'm just not going to do the multiplication, and I'm going to just print 42, and it matches the output. <laughs> 42 is a special special number. I just randomly picked that. That's called an Easter egg. That's the Easter egg that I put in, and then I forgot that it was there. So you can always print 42. It's not the answer in this particular situation, but it's the answer to lots of things. Um, so... You're supposed to say 42, and then it, it matches. But then what happens is I've got code that looks at your code. So if I told you to multiply 6 times 7, but you didn't, it'll say like, hey, you were supposed to do a multiplication, but you didn't. You just printed 42. So it, it's, it's not just that you produce the output. That's not enough. It's going to kind of critique your code. Now, you might think this is sort of me being mean and you're supposed to break through this as a security hole. And clever students have done that. They eventually find a way to do produce the output in a way that confuses all of my attempts to catch you not producing the output the right way. Um, but, but ultimately, my goal there is not necessarily to punish you. My goal there is to coach you, right, to tell you, oh, you should have used a for loop here. You're missing an input statement. Or there was a multiplication that you were supposed to do. Or you need to, you need to multiply the numbers together. Or something like that. And so, so when I add that, it's not just to annoy you. 
It's to kind of get you to write the code right, correctly. And what you find is as the code gets later and later and later, I do less and less coaching. I still kind of check for a few obvious things, but I don't spend so much time. So the earlier ones, hopefully just about every mistake you make, it'll pop up a little message that says, hey, you didn't do blank. And so I try to make it, that's part of teaching you, not part of punishing you. So um, I, those are called static checks. So basically, this is a way for you to do your, you can do this as many times as you like. There's no limitation. There's no due date on these things. You just hit it and hit it and hit it. And at some point, you get your grade. And then you can move on to your next task in the course.